Welcome to the closing session of the conference. We have uh, a few points to cover uh, in the closing. The first one is a membership meeting of Digital Government Society, so I'd like to give the floor to the board. Please. Thank you, uh, Thomas, for having uh, this. I'll change it a little bit. Thank you uh, for having us uh, here. Well, we are run, of course, by our members. And that's why this uh, membership meeting is also important, because we're all peers, eh? we're all together in this. Who is not a member? Who dares? You should. <laughs> Most of the people will be member over here, but because when you register, we will ensure that you can become a member. And well, the whole community is run by the members and we are just sitting on behalf of the board and we are elected uh, uh, every uh, two years with other people. When you look at the elections, you can run two times, two times two years. And why? Also to ensure that other people will appear and uh, will take it over. That's very important. So I all count on you in the future also to be standing here and to be sitting uh, in front. Somebody has to do it. Uh, uh, this time it's us. Next time it might be you. Uh, and that's very important uh, to look. M membership means also a little bit accountability. So we will talk a little bit about the committees, about uh, 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 our budget, how we are running the things uh, with that. And you can also influence it. And if you disagree, just wave. Feel free to disagree with that. That's also part of it. Sam is already smiling. He always disagrees. So that's, that's good. <laughs> and he knows I like that uh, if um, people uh, disagree. And first of all, looking back, what's uh, some of the important achievements? Uh, first of all, the collaboration with the IFIP Working Group uh, A.Find. And th that was a very smooth uh, uh, integration. And why? Because there are all, also EDES also over sitting, uh, sitting over here. So we have a couple of same board members uh, being part of uh, DDS and being part of IFIP Working Group uh, A.5. And what we try to do is to integrate it. And why it's so important? Not to integrate it in a financial sense, because we want to have the conferences uh, separated with that, but to have one huge community. And if you have more members, that means also you have more yeah, power and you have more insight. And also you can align the conferences when they are held and how uh, they are held. And that's also very important. Eh? Like this year, we have it in uh, Gdansk and Budapest. And then you can align it also a little bit to ensure that uh, we have to show up enough uh, people for both uh, conferences. That's why it's so uh, important. Another thing uh, that was uh, very important for us, and that was a differentiation of the fee per, period, uh, per region. So we have people from some countries who have less money and some people from more richer uh, countries who might have more uh, money. So we make a differentiation in the fees uh, for that. We had that already for a while on our agenda and this time uh, we realized uh, it. And that means that some of the uh, people from the richer countries pay a little bit more and they sponsor the people from the less uh, uh, rich uh, country. That's the whole idea. And why? Because we want to have an to be an international community. That's very important. We also, we did it for the, uh, for the conference and we also want to do it in the future for the membership. Uh, what we also realized as part of the professionalization, because we want to have a professional uh, society, is have a secretary. Paula Horser, she's not uh, here, she's from the US, Albany, working also at the CTT. We have her as support for us, for making things uh, done. And you might have been in contact with her about registration, about the attendance uh, of uh, parts of it. And she will chase also when people don't uh, do their job. She's very important for those kinds of uh, organizations. And that also professionalizes the community because then we also, uh, we rotate, but she can uh, stay for ever because she's part of the uh, uh, support and also make the things run. Very important to have it uh, uh, run. Well, we will uh, uh, hear the committees in a moment, but those are very important things, uh, uh, what happens. I like to push things uh, a little bit. You already heard it uh, yesterday uh, for that. Well, what I like to push uh, forward, differentiation of the memberships per region, I already told you. 
I would like to have new chapters. We have a Chinese chapter. IFIP Working Group 8.5 has become a kind of uh, chapter. And, well, I'm pushing a little bit by put, putting the name Brazil already over there. We have so many members from uh, Brazil that we should, I think, have a chapter uh, in Brazil. All the countries as well. When I look at uh, the Netherlands, we could have a Dutch chapter, but I don't think it's that uh, uh, useful because it's such a small country uh, for that. But we need some kind of chapters like that. What we also happens over here is that we will have the elections uh, uh, this year, and that means some of the board members depart, some uh, uh, new board members will uh, take it uh, over for that. And as a member, yeah, most of you are the membership, please vote because also that's support uh, for the board with that. Well, uh, we have our next president uh, sitting uh, over here, yeah? already elected uh, uh, two years ago. <laughs> and that's very important, because then we have the continuity uh, for that, those uh, kinds of things. So please uh, vote uh, this year. We have also other plans, but we uh, won't, will not go into detail. Uh, Mila is not here, she's our treasure, and Mila is really on top of the things with that. She's really from all the details taking care of it, and she spent a lot of time on uh, being uh, the treasure. We are a transparent organization. This is our uh, balance and uh, also the net income or net uh, loss uh, we have over the years. What you see is now that we didn't pay the expenses yet for this uh, conference. So we have a lot of income which we don't have the expenses yet. So they have to be reduced uh, uh, from it. How it will end, I don't know, but I think uh, what we try to do is run a little bit uh, break even for that. So we are a society with... Uh, uh, some money in house and that's why we can also take the risk because organizing conference is always riskful eh? we had it in the past eh? when we couldn't organize uh, uh, in mexico the conference due to the swine uh, flu and then we made a huge uh, loss as you might have seen not that huge we was manageable uh, over there but we have also need those kind of situations uh, for taking the risk and being able to organize it and also to uh, ensure the continuity mm -hmm. So this is an overview of the latest uh, part of the uh, expenses. Uh. This is, gives an idea about uh, the type of uh, cost we have. We have operational cost, website, domain, content management uh, uh, system, the uh, fee we have to pay for the teleconferencing, uh, the, the Zoom uh, we're using, uh, membership uh, uh, system, member clicks uh, called, that's quite a fee, but it's also part of our professionalization because we want to have a good overview of the uh, memberships. Box we use for archiving everything, so we also have our history. Uh, the administrative technical support, I talked about Paula as administrative uh, support, but you have also technical support for ensuring that the website is uh, uh, run uh, with that. And, uh, well, we have also some charitable uh, organization fee. Then the conference uh, uh, cost uh, with that. It's about the lunch we had, dinner we had, of course, easy chair system, the ACM proceedings, the awards, sometimes speakers fee, and the total expenses to date are over here. So you can retract it from uh, the previous uh, slide. So it gives you an insight. This is not the final number, but it gives you at least the insight in where do we stand. And of course, this fluctuates each year. Each year, we make a balance uh, for that. What are our main incomes? Very, very simple. Conference registration. We have a little bit sponsorship, thanks to iOS Press, Elsevier, and Emerald. They're always uh, happy to sponsor uh, some part of the best paper uh, awards and do other things with that. And we really appreciate those uh, type of uh, sponsors. And we will try to increase the sponsors also uh, in the future. We have the student support fund. That's the Valerie Gregg International Student uh, uh, Fund. I have a slide later about that. And that's also very important eh, when you register. You can also contribute to this uh, uh, fund, and that will help students from uh, uh, certain countries to also to come to the com conference uh, with that. We have uh, uh, memberships also for people who don't attend the conference, and the total income to date is uh, shown over here. That gives you an impression about how it's come. Also, it's not finalized uh, uh, for that. 
I already told you about the Valerie Gregg International Student uh, Fund. Huh? We, uh, it was founded uh, after the passing away of uh, Valerie Gregg. Uh, well, students who want to attend the PhD uh, colloquium can attend it, and we try to support some people for it. So please, uh, if, uh, if you want to uh, take care of it, if you want to contribute uh, to this uh, fund. And it's also important for us to help people to come in, to come in this uh, conference and take a next uh, step. Uh, Gabriella already had to leave. Yes, she was here, so people are looking around, but she already had to leave. Uh, so I will uh, do this uh, if it's fine with you. Uh, the total members, officially we have 141, but we are integrating with the IFIP members because they will also become the members and it will be about 120 more. So next year I hope we will have about 260 and maybe even 300 uh, members. And then we will look at the past, people who have attended it, there's a potential for about 400 members. So if we are able to include them, then we might grow to 300, 400, 500 members in the future. I think that's important because if you want to be a community that has an impact, you need uh, more members than just the people who attended the uh, digital government conference uh, over here. But you really need to have uh, more membership uh, over here. And I think we're heading slowly for it. Eh? Once we integrate uh, it uh, finally and we take a next step, we will become a huge community and that means also people from outside will see more the importance uh, of it. Uh, the sponsorship committee, Luis is not here, so I keep on uh, talking uh, about it. Luis, Mila and Thomas, I will talk, keep on talking about it. Well, this is the sponsorship uh, income, iOS Press as the uh, main uh, sponsor, Elsevier and uh, Emerald as uh, sponsors, and they're very important for it. And why are they happy to sponsor? Due to the connections also to the journals. And that's also uh, very important for them and for us. So please remember the names. I keep on repeating them because that's why they sponsor also uh, over here. Uh, we try to build on those relationships and well, we had no time for it the last couple of years to extend it, but we try to extend it a little bit with more institutional sponsorship. And think also about institutes. We could, uh, uh, we have a couple of members from one institute who could also have institutional uh, support or something like that. The potential uh, for that, for the plans uh, in uh, the, f the future. Again, the logos, keeping on uh, reporting uh, that. The student supporting uh, committee, please come forward, Ida. This is a scary microphone. So, so, so it's uh, Gabriella and me who organize the Student Support Committee. Um, there we are. And the goal is, of course, to integrate all new, uh, all our new members, all our new uh, PhD students into the community. And uh, Yuche prepared very well for me. Uh, I took over from him uh, at the present. We have like a 66% overlap between the PhD colloquium organizers and this support committee. The only one who's missing is Ramon Gil Garcia. So, of course, right now it's Gabriela and I who run both uh, the PhD colloquium here and also at IFIP EGA conference, and then we run the student support committee. Uh, but what we have done during this term is to try to develop a little bit more how we can integrate our PhD members, our PhD student members, and we would happily receive more suggestions on what we can do. What we have tried to do is, first of all, we have in, uh, involved the student as a representative, so Stanislav Mahula from Co-11, uh, and after the elections this autumn, we will announce for a new student representative, and now I'm looking at students who will, are here, I hope that someone of you are, will be interested in taking over of the Stanislav. Raise your hand if you're interested. Raise your hand anyway. <laughs> and th it, there will be like a separate election for this position. And what we do is we have meetings sometimes and we talk about how we can support the student com uh, community. 
Uh, and we are trying to also organize now for further webinars. We had one webinar this spring. I see some of you here who are participating and we're trying, we had uh, Thomas as a speaker and uh, David Buenasid and also Elsa Esteves was there and shared their experiences of publishing. Next time we will talk about career building. Uh, so we were trying to capture what you, what you want to know more about. And yesterday, I think, we got a new assignment, uh, or two days ago, to try to also investigate if we can somehow start a summer school in connection to this conference. If you think that that is a good idea, then please volunteer for that type of work. So get in contact with, with us, and we will try to organize for something. Did I forget something? No. Yeah. Any questions? And it's Ignacio. Well, let's move forward to the communications committee. Um, well, this this committee is uh, um, uh, in, well. In here, we are included not just myself, also Julian Villodre, who is there, and also Luis Luna Reyes, and I'm going to talk on behalf of, of them. Well, here you have the vision of this committee, but, but basically you can see that we try to uh, improve the external visibility of the society using the different tools that are at hand to do so, including, well, especially uh, social media. I don't know if you are aware, but during the conference, we have been doing work on social media with the hashtag DG. 2023 uh, and we have been promoting the different panels and the different tracks uh, on social media. Um, the visibility of the community and also we want to promote the uh, visibility of the members uh, of each of you using uh, our social media. So if you have something that you want to promote to make it visible to uh, the rest of the of the community, please uh, interact with us in Twitter, in Facebook, and especially uh, also in LinkedIn. Um, now we we are taking control of of, different, of our different uh, uh, profiles, and we are now searching for the social media management help in order to make this function something. Uh, important for the society. We have to connect with other partners, with other uh, actors uh, who play in the same field of digital government. And uh, we think this is something critical for us. So uh, in that sense, uh, we are making a call for your help and to, uh, to make you aware, aware of this work. We are also, uh, well, in this sense, I want to say that we are working with Paulo Hosser, that, who is actually uh, making part of uh, her administrative uh, support to the society also in the field of co the communications uh, committee. So we have meetings with her in order to get her involved in this process. Also, we are now and always uh, identifying uh, influencers in our society, people who actually are more active in social media. We are, I have to say that we are very shy in this society and we are very, we are working on digital government, but we are not a especially uh, expressive uh, community in social media. So we keep push you to, uh, to do it in the future. And also for us, something that it's important, we take care of the Wikipedia profile of this society. This is very important for us, for, uh, for the visibility and for the reliability of the society in front of the, of the society, of the, of the uh, in general. Well, here the progress, we, well, you can check the, the content that we are creating in, in Twitter, in, in, uh, especially now we are working on LinkedIn. So, most of you, we know that you have a profile in LinkedIn. Follow us. We will follow. We promise that we will follow you. And, and <laughs> so follow us and keep in touch with us uh, in between the different conference that we are taking place and uh, in which we participate. This is a way to also keep uh, the communication with us 
uh, active. We have uh, also, I have to say that uh, these plans for 2023, promoting the, the engagement with the members of the society, fostering the, the engagement with all the digital government uh, conferences and groups. Uh, this is also the, something that we are promoting and trying to uh, keep uh, updated through social media. Uh, promoting the publication during the 2023 term in uh, help of our social media managers and also identify indicators uh, to measure the, how we are doing in, in social media and in this process of communication. So now, now you know that some of you uh, may have researched in, uh, in social media, <laughs> in government, so we are trying to figure out how to measure what we are doing and how to reach with you and, and to measure it. And also we are in the process of elaboration of our digital government society strategy an operational uh, document or policy guide according with the strategy of the society in order to make this function of the society something that will uh, last in the future even if uh, Julian or myself or, or Riz, we are not in, in charge of it. So finally, align external and internal communication strategies with the uh, society uh, strategy is also important. So. Here, my last message is that we need your help. We need the communication uh, or the, the strategy of the communication of the society is not just something of the uh, board, it's also part of all of you. So thank you so much and we keep in touch also in social media. All right. Thank you. Um, so uh, I would report on behalf of the award committee. So award committee member includes myself and Lani uh, sitting there and Catherine Dumas from Siemens University. Actually now she just announced a change of position and she is going to be a PhD director for SUNY Albany. Uh, so uh, it's a great committee to volunteer for. I'm just advertising a little bit on behalf of our committee because it's really fun and the work that we are doing is significant and important to promote the work of the society and it's really a fun community uh, because we kind of really specializing in academic gossiping. So using the, this committee time, we talk a lot about what happens around the world um, among academia. So I really sincerely uh, welcome and invite you to join the committee and then we can work together. So the goal is to uh, cultivate the research and professional accomplishment um, through this fellows award and distinguished service award. Uh, and um, support the development of lifelong commitment to digital government society. Uh, so uh, in order to reach this goal, uh, the current process involve um, improve the procedures. So we have protocols for identifying, you know, the awardee and uh, how to evaluate. Um, the nominations and the making decisions. So we constantly improve upon the procedure uh, and reaching out uh, when we have call for no nominations. Sometimes it's a little harder to get this coming in because it involved quite a bit of work for people to write um, long and uh, meticulous kind of letter to um, nominate uh, our deserved members. So uh, we need to actually reaching out and sometimes really reaching out to our personal network and then trying to persuade people to, 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 to do this. Um, so please um, also help us to spread the world uh, and when you think about nomination time. Uh, and then uh, work with the board member to make the final awards. Uh, and as you already seen from last night, uh, what these two categories of award really trying to accomplish. Uh, and the plan um, for 2023, um, so a lot of the feedback that we received from the last couple of years is 
think of a way of elevate、uh, this awardee's work.、Uh, think about you know we have fellows, and then these people's work、uh, not only contributes to our society's advancement, it should push、um, the interdisciplinary development of. The digital government,、uh, information system, societal impact of information、uh, in general. So, how we can make that their work more visible, amplified, right? So, we thought about maybe next year、um, tagging along with the 25th anniversary of the society. We may publish a special collection, a fellows collection. So, yesterday we. Discuss quite、uh, a lot during the working meetings,、um, so this is something that、uh, we plan to advance next year,、uh, and then also putting this information everywhere that we we could. So we just、uh, sent, for example, Ignacio、uh, the information from last night, put it on social media, put it on our website and、uh, Wikipedia for the society. So become a, a, a print footprint of the society, of、uh, official record of our development,、uh, and、um, improve the process,、uh, and、uh, think about maybe there is other opportunity for our words.、Um, so we joked about you know Thomas get this big tag. Of、uh, the best, <laughs> right? So maybe there's a word that's really deserve <laughs> formal recognition. So、uh, think about other ways that we can、um, uh, elevate and acknowledge the work of our members in the society. So that's all about. The award committee. Thank you, thank you.、Uh, this is all about what we want to present about the digital government society. Don't forget that the board members are all volunteers who do this in their free time, and、uh, we、uh, meet once a month electronically using、uh, Zoom. We discuss the thing. We have the working、uh, groups, and we try to achieve a lot. And also the conference organization, also like here, is volunteers. I spent a lot of time、uh, on it, and also those who are organizing the future conferences, they spent a lot of time on it. And I think everybody is happy to do so because we are there for each other. We help each other, and that's I think a very strong asset of this uh, uh, community. We like to discuss research, and we would like to bring it also one step further. And I think another、uh, aspect that is、Hello. part of this community is that we are socially engaged. Because we want all to have also an impact on、uh, society, making uh, things uh, better, and that can also be done using those kind of research、uh, we are doing. So this is quite typically、uh, the, 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 the aspects of our members、uh, and why we are doing、uh, the things. Before giving it back to、uh, Thomas, I would like to thank all the board members for their、uh, all the work they did. Thank you very much. Any comments, questions about this? Boyega, do you want to ask something? You're sure? Good. Somebody else? Now you have the opportunity to ask. We try to be transparent about、uh, all the things. Yeah, we're researching it, and we try to be also、uh, in this way. Thank you very much to be here, and Thomas,、uh, back to you as the chair of this session. I think this is the right moment to play a message from John Bertot. Yes. Hello. For those of you who don't know me, my name is John Bertot. I'm very much honored and humbled to receive the recognition of the DGS Fellows Award. It's especially gratifying when you consider prior recipients: Ramon Gil Garcia, Yochan Shol, Sharon Dawes, and Maran Yansen. This is truly the August Company, for whom I have a great deal of admiration and respect. I apologize for not being able to join you in person. 
to receive this honor and will keep my remarks brief. My own journey with digital government actually began in government service as part of the New York State Legislature, specifically the Assembly or the equivalent of the House. Uh, we have a two-chamber system in the U.S. and in most states. The Assembly was an early adopter of a range of technology and applications such as online legislative tracking system, constituent services, and policy analysis. While these may sound very basic, even they're even expected now, they were game changers back then, and I was fortunate to be there at the beginning. But that process brought forward a number of questions, such as, how does the legislative process work, and how can technology facilitate that process? What systems and application design processes can we engage to best meet the needs of the intended user communities? How do we leverage the investments in systems and applications to better serve the legislative process and deliver value for the public? My early experiences demonstrated that there were, and there still remain, a number of questions regarding how we use digital technologies in serving, engaging, and interacting with the publics we serve and innovating public services themselves. As I changed careers, I had the privilege to study under and work with pioneers in what ultimately became the field of digital government. Sharon Dawes, Stu Brettschneider, Teresa Pardo, Larry Brandt, Jochen Scholl, Roman Gil Garcia, Luis Luna Reyes, just to name a few. These individuals not only helped to launch the field, but also helped to create a community of scholars and practitioners who are instrumental in forming what ultimately evolved into the digital government society. Others will judge my own contribution to the field, but there is one effort in my career about which I am most proud, and that is reinventing Government Information Quarterly, or GIQ as we know it, into a premier journal for digital government research and practice. The transformation of GIQ took place over a 15 year period. But in my view, it was more than just about trying to create a respected and regarded journal. It was about creating a space where digital government scholars and practitioners could inform each other through their studies and projects. It was about creating a community of scholars and practitioners who could come together and share their insights and in doing so help us all learn and innovate. It was about making the case for rewarding and supporting digital government scholars as they advanced in their careers. GIQ has only been enhanced in reputation under the outstanding leadership of Marian Jansen and Tomasz Janowski. I can't thank them enough for what they have been doing and continue to do for our community and for our scholarship. Finally, let me just say thanks to all of you. Digital government has emerged as a strong and impactful discipline. What was planted through seeds of hope a few decades ago has grown into a vibrant garden. Thank you all, and my sincere thanks to the Digital Government Society for, for this honor. Now I'd like to request Loni Hagen to, on behalf of program chairs of this year conference to uh, share her impression about the process and the outcome. Uh, we had uh, all, uh, about 155 submissions received, and we accepted uh, 68 papers and four workshops and 15 posters. Um, all this uh, result was not possible uh, without all the uh, committee members who helped uh, review papers. Uh, we had 186 program committee members voluntarily provided 364 comprehensive reviews. Um, it is like a 2.6 uh, average reviews uh, per paper. Uh, that was pretty uh, quite helpful to improve uh, quality of the final product, which was uh, published as a ACM um, proceedings. Um, thanks to your hard work another word to go through the process. <clears throat> so the submissions were made by, uh, from 38 countries in the world. And then just for fun, I will give you some uh, summary. The Brazil uh, submitted 18.7 papers. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, followed by United States, 15 papers, and Germany, 12 papers. China, 11 papers. Um, also, among 18 tracks that we had overall, um, track 11, Digital Transformation in Governments, attracted 27 papers in that session. <laughs> Also, we had a PhD colloquium where we initially had 11 uh, submissions, but I think we had uh, six students um, join. Um, also, we had a first student session uh, organized by uh, our students, and it was pretty encouraging, and we hope um, that we can uh, keep this uh, tradition of engaging more students, actively engaging. I think that's uh, overall reviews about program. Uh, cheers. Thank you. As we know, this is a continuity of effort of the community with DGO conferences happening annually. Uh, there is a, a planning period going ahead a number of years. Um, and we agreed that the first person to welcome here to talk about the future edition is Edimara Luciano to talk about DGO 2025. Welcome. Thank you, Thomas and Mariah, for the opportunity to share a bit of uh, what uh, we have been planning about uh, DGO 2025 in Brazil, Rio Grande do Sul State, Porto Alegre City. And uh, we are really glad um, to have the opportunity uh, to organize DGO 2025. And uh, so this is a, is a view from Porto Alegre City. Uh, probably you know uh, Porto Alegre because uh, participatory budgeting was created there 35 years ago. And so since uh, then we have been developing uh, democratic concerns and discussions uh, around the city and uh, the space. So this is a, a new place of the city uh, that is part of a smart city I can I say big uh, strategy for the city and I believe uh, we are going to have the opportunity to visit a few spaces during the, the, the conference there. So we decided to discuss about strengthening democracy and equality, global challenges for digital government. As you probably know, uh, from time to time, we have been struggling in Brazil and in Latin America about our democracy. And so uh, we consider really important to discuss the role of a digital government in continuing to, to maintain democratic levels on transparency, participation, uh, public consultation and uh, um, to to, def to reflect it and to discuss about the risks to our democracy and uh, about the opportunity digital government brings to our democracy. That is quite new in the whole uh, Latin America. So you probably uh, are more aware about uh, Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo, which are the biggest uh, cities of Brazil. Porto Alegre is located in the south region of Brazil, actually in the southern state, in the border with Argentina and Brazil, and it creates, uh, this creates a whole uh, uh, different culture. We share a lot of values. Uh, with our friends, with our uh, uh, hermanos from Argentina and uh, Uruguay. So um, 
because we we are living a bit uh, far from Sao Paulo and Rio, it's not that far, don't be concerned. It's like a one hour and 20 minutes uh, by plane, and there are plenty, yeah, several vo uh, flights uh, during uh, the day. Uh, so Porto Alegre is the capital uh, city of the state of Rio Grande do Sul, uh, which created participatory budget, budget as a public policy in 1989. Um, we have been uh, um, uh, hosting important global events, um, um, including World Social Forum twice, and uh, several editions of International Free Software Forum. So the city uh, is really focused on attract and event events and to receive people to discuss and to learn and to share what we are proud of and to learn with the, the, the foreigners and uh, the ones that uh, are uh, visiting us. Uh, Rio Grande do Sul is a state uh, uh, that has been receiving many immigrants, so around uh, the two world wars from uh, Italy, German, Portuguese, Porto Alegre is a, a city founded by, by Portuguese uh, people, but uh, um, people from many other uh, countries, and we continue receiving um, uh, immigrants and refugees, so it continues uh, um, to maintain a vibrant atmosphere and a city that is open to discuss and open to different people and different uh, um, uh, things that we can learn. So um, the event is going to be uh, hosted in the university when I work. Uh, so I, I am a professor at this university. I have been working there um, in the last 23 uh, years. So a few uh, facts. It's an um, important university in the Brazilian scenario. From time to time, we are part of the global rankings as one of the best uh, universities uh, in Brazil. We have a complete uh, infrastructure for uh, events. Yeah, we, we host uh, um, a few events in, in a regular um, year. And uh, so it's a university devoted to all uh, um, science areas, not specific to so it's a, a, a more um, global approach of the, the university. Um, last year, since we started to work with, with this proposal, we created what we have been calling as a working group. Uh, so we can see here a, a few names that probably you know. Um, we were focused um, on having a group mixing uh, faculty members from uh, administration, from management side, and from computer science, because are the, the areas that I have been discussing, researching, and teaching digital uh, government, and uh, also representatives from several uh, states uh, of the, the county. As a big county, this is important to have this uh, representation. So uh, I have here two colleagues that is part of this uh, working group. So I would like to ask them to, to introduce themselves. Maria Alexandra, please. So Kellington Brito also attended this uh, edition of DGO, but uh, he already uh, left. Uh, uh, so uh, we are starting now to think uh, about the um, inviting uh, members for uh, um, in, um, universities abroad. So maintaining this idea that uh, teams from DGO are, are merging, yeah, part of the, the other teams. So this is just the, the, the Brazilian team. And uh, I would like to um, uh, thanks for the opportunity to learn with this uh, amazing, well-organized conference, Thomas. And also thank you from the Taiwan uh, uh, team that uh, gently invited us to be part of the, the discussion. So it's a good opportunity to learn uh, the good practices and uh, to try to give our best to have a, a, a remarkable conference. So thank you, and we are looking forward to receiving all of you in Porto Alegre, Brazil, in 2025. Thank you.
thank you very much. Eddie Maria, we, we all look forward to, to being in Brazil, in Porto Alegre with you. Um, now it's time to welcome Helen Liu. Uh, she will tell us about next year's conference. Welcome, Helen. With the whole team. Hi, everyone. I'm Helen uh, from the National Taiwan University. Uh, like many of you here, uh, doctoral students, my very first DGO was actually back in 2009 when they were celebrating the 10 years anniversary. And wow, time flies. Now we're entering to the 25th anniversary, and it has been my privilege, and also I'm so honored that our team, you know, two years ago has been entrusted by the DGS community to host the 2024 uh, DGO conference. In particular, I also want to thank Ma Ryan as a president, also as a co-chair of the conference, as well as Tamash and his wonderful team has been supporting our team in the past one years in preparation of, you know, the DGO 2024. And before we give you the detail of the plannings and, you know, the reason why you should come. I also want to introduce you our wonderful team member that worked tirelessly in the past one years to prepare this upcoming conference. So I'm going to invite one, one by one to introduce themselves. Yes. So my name is Yi Jie Chen. Uh, right now I'm the, at the University of Nebraska, Omaha. And I had a privilege to serve on the uh, DGS board uh, for two terms. And then uh, I had a wonderful opportunity to get to know all the society members and really I benefit from uh, learning a lot from all of them. Uh, and then uh, I'm also a alma mater of uh, National Taiwan University. So it will be an opportunity for me to uh, host the conference. Uh, along with Helen, so I, I really uh, would like to kind of welcome all of you to come to uh, Taipei, Taiwan. Uh, I'm Xin Zhong Liao from uh, National Zhengzi University. Uh, this time I could be the, maybe the program chair, uh, have, have, have a lot of a duty needed to do. <laughs> so I have a really nervous, but, uh, however, uh, the previous year, uh, I also joined the, the, the whole program. So I learned a lot of uh, experience. I really thank you, uh, the Thomas and a lot of uh, co colleagues, uh, from here. So, uh, that's a wonderful experience. Uh, I hope, uh, the, the wonderful experience will be getting better and much more wonderful <laughs> in Taipei. Okay. So, uh, welcome all of you guys. Maybe next year we meet, uh, in Taipei, Taiwan. Hello everyone, um, I'm Han Gao, I, um, I'm currently the assistant professor in Yuanzhi University, which is pretty close, like one hour away from um, uh, Taiwan, and uh, from Taipei, the National Taiwan University. Also, I'm an alumni of National Taiwan of US as well. And my uh, department is Department of uh, Social and Policy Sciences, so it's more like around policy side and uh, in combination of open government and all those things. And I will be assist um, Professor uh, uh, Helen Liu and uh, Liao Xinzhong uh, to help the whole uh, program and uh, the whole uh, digital, uh, this conference uh, next year in Taipei. So hopefully we'll see you uh, next year in Taipei. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Shen Zheng, Xinzhong Liao and I host uh, the track three uh, this year. So uh, we are very looking forward to see you next year in Taipei, Taiwan. And uh, that's, uh, uh, it's a good honor to be here. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Yu Wei. I'm from National Taiwan University. I'm a master's student right now. And before my master's degree, I was a reporter. So next year, I will contact with media and promote the conference. Uh, also, each count, I vision Deutsche Sprechen, each has a new way to counter out each 
uh, Mimi Hyson. Yeah, each four year Mitch of this Kenneth Lennon would feel a common to Taiwan. Yeah, thank you. So as the Brazilian team, we'll be working with them together preparing the 2024, 2025 conferences. Just like them, we have an interdisciplinary team as well as, you know, scholar from all across the university in Taiwan. Uh, however, the conference site is going to be in National Taiwan University in Taipei. And conference day is going to be in June. 11th and 14th, as you know, the previous tradition in May and June. And that's our College of Social Science building where we will be hosting the conference site. And this is our coconut street where you'll be working from the hotel to our building. And the track proposal due date will be August 15th. So now is the time to connect with the track chairs or potential reviewers to, pre you know, to prepare your track proposal. So don't eager to leave get it done first before you leave the hallway today. And more importantly, the paper submission through our working meeting yesterday, we have nailed it down to be January 29th. That will be Monday, where we will have office staff to support you in any technical issues. And we will have our student volunteer to assist you throughout the whole conference time. That's our uh, entries of the hallway. Uh, this is a hallway where we will host the keynote speakers. And this is the setting of some of our meeting room. We have the small, you know, 20 person, biggest to 200 people. So it depends on the needs of your session. And also, some of you have asked, where are we going to do a visit? Uh, we will be visit the Taipei Urban Intelligence Center. Also, gratefully, Taipei City Government has already committed a sponsorship for a gala award dinner. And for some of you, say Taiwan is so far away, uh, 15 hours of travel minimum. And if you want to spend a little bit longer, there's the Computex that held in Taiwan, where they feature the latest gadgets, computer equipment. For instance, recently the Navida just featured the supercomputer chips that they recently has announced. So if you are interested in the latest you know, computer equipment or AI technology, this is one of the conference luckily will be held a week before us. So you can also stop by or let your colleague know about it. A lot of computer science and also a lot of the semiconductor industry leaders will attend this conference. And of course, the food. Just like how much we enjoy the food here in this conference, especially my two boys told me, Mom, the conference food are so good. <laughs> so we will also offer you delicious food and also convenient tickets if your family would like to join us. So just a little bit of taste, some local food, some western food, and some seafood, etc. And also this is our campus hotel for some of you. you know, they offer very reasonable price, uh, roughly under $100 of accommodation, and we will also support students' stay. And also Metro, that's nearly free. If you want to try to get your Metro car, you can try to travel around Taipei freely. And also places that we like to host the reception. So Volcano there. 
and also the Cloud Gate Theater, where they are actually arts and culture. So they actually host one of the international well-known art performance using digital and、um, lighting, etc. So it's a combination of arts and technology. As well as historical, this is a Saint,、uh, Fort Saint、uh, Dominico、uh, Fort that's in Dan Shui. It's a nice by MRT. All the site we show you can be traveled by MRT, and this has a historical sites about this fort、uh, in Taipei or a natural work preservation of、uh, a very special forest that actually hosts the bird migrant bird from the northern. Some of your very interesting semiconductor industry development in Taiwan. So we do have the TSMC Museum of Innovation. For some of you who like to visit, that will be also a really good museum to visit in Xinjiang. As well as some cultural, if you want like art and culture for your children, and we have this traditional kanga, a different diverse group for indigenous people, where you can actually learn their arts and crafts. Welcome to Digio. 2024, where DGS community, families, friends meet. So we bring the families here that we hope will see you. <laughs> so may I invite Yu Zhe to say a few words as he has a long connection to the. Uh, there's one saying actually in Taiwan that what will touch the heart are the people of Taiwan, and then I welcome this opportunity for us to touch each other's heart、uh, in Taipei, Taiwan. Now back to Tomash. <laughs> Um, we are coming to the end of our program for the conference.、Uh, I just like to make two announcements、uh, for poster authors. If you would like to receive your printed poster, please approach us just after the closing session.、Um, we'll make sure that the poster is delivered to you. Also, please approach us if you need formal certificates of attendance signed by by the university by the host.、Um, It's time to close the conference.、Um, as I expressed before, it's always amazing to me how fast the conference lasts in the scale of many months of preparation. I mean, literally seconds after it starts, it finishes.、Um, uh, of course, this is a both intensive and very rewarding time、uh, for the for the organizers. All thanks to you.、Um, I just mentioned by name our keynote speakers. President Lech Wałęsa, Wojciech Celary, Yolanda Martinez.、Uh, I will deliver. Thank you very much for your insightful presentations and、uh, spending time with us.、Uh, concerning the opening keynote, you see the photo, our joint photo here with President Wałęsa. I will make sure. Um, I would like to thank our patrons, the Lech Wałęsa Institute Foundation, the Marshal of the Pomorskie Wojewodeship, the President of the City of Gdańsk, and the Rector of Gdańsk University of Technology. Our sponsor, the excellent. University, Idup, Elsevier, iOS Press, and our partners, European Solidarity Center and GovStack.、Um, I again express my thanks to the DGS president and board, 
um, and to the members of the organization team on both sides of the Atlantic, the lake. On the, on the western side, Mila Gasco and Paula, Paula Hausner. On the eastern side, and I would like them to stand up, please, um, Magdalena Ciesielska, David Duena Sit, uh, Jaromir Durkiewicz, Igor Garnik. Wait a second, please. Please uh, wait a second. Igor Garnik, Karolina Krause Brykalska, Grażyna Musiatowicz Podbiał, Nina Rizun, Sławomir Ostrowski, and Nadia Sabatini, and all our student volunteers. Can you please stand up and join me in a round of applause? And, and our photographer, please. And, and our photographer, Asia. You know, this is these, uh, you know, months of preparation and uh, seconds, very rewarding seconds of conference lasting uh, in just a few days. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for having us uh, here. Eh? On behalf of the whole uh, society, all the people over here, I would like to thank you uh, all for making this happen within a very short uh, time. And I remember when Thomas was asking, can we change the date to my birthday? He was uh, <laughs> saying from, oh, new tradition, every time a new uh, birthday on somebody's, next year also a birthday. So happy birthday to you and thank you for all making this happen. Also the people behind the curtains, uh, because they do uh, also a great job. Thank you. And last but not least, my deepest appreciations to all members of the community for coming to Gdańsk, active participation, and in the end, strengthening our community. Please keep the fire burning, okay? So safe, travel home, and see you in Taiwan, okay? The conference is over. <laughs> <laughs>